Are you missing your pet on the other side and you want to get a message? Well, here are six signs that your pet's sending you messages from the other side. Hi, my name is Danielle McKinnon. I'm an animal communicator. And today we're going to be talking about six really common ways that our animals that have crossed over will send us messages. I wanted to talk about this because so many people miss their dear dog, their cat, their hamster, their guinea pig, their fish that has crossed over. And they don't know what to look for in terms of messages and signs. Our animals that have crossed over, they're always sending us messages and signs. They want nothing more than for us to believe they're there for us to maybe even sense that they're there. So they're constantly giving us messages of, hello, I'm here, hello, I love you, things like that. But if you don't know what to look for, you can just kind of overlook the messages or not believe the messages. So hopefully by me going through these, it's gonna help you trust these messages that I bet your animal is already sending you. So we're gonna go through the six ways and I have a bonus way as well. So and these aren't just the only six, there's so many ways. These are just kind of like the common easiest ones. So the first way is through your animal's name. So my dog's name, uh, when she was alive, she was Bella, she still is Bella. And she'll often uh, let me know she's around and basically say hi using her name. So what will happen will be I'm um, watching TV and I hear about a Bella on TV. And then I'm reading packaging at the grocery store and it says Bella. And then I get something in the mail and I see it's uh, there, the word Bella is on it. And those three things have nothing to do with each other. They're all on the same day or they're all in the same short period of time. It's my Bella's way of saying, I'm here, I love you. It's not a warning. It's not watch out, Bella's in trouble. Three it's nothing like that. It's Bella simply letting me know, hey, I'm around, I love you. That's all she's doing. And so often that's all they're doing. They just want you to clue into their love. The second way that animals will very often send their little love notes and hellos is actually through smell. So I'm gonna use my dog Bella again because um, she was a chocolate lab and she was a smelly chocolate lab. And while it wasn't the best smell because it was kind of like dirty dog smell, she didn't like bats, but she loved swimming in the swamp and the pond and all these other places, um, that smell was her distinct smell. So sometimes I'm sitting at my desk in my office and just walks by the Bella smell. That's it, it just walks by. And it's just Bella's way of letting me know, hey, I'm here. Now your animal on the other side could do their smell. The animal could do this, the smell of their favorite toy. The animal could do the smell of poop. You know, they, they, do, they choose whatever it is that you're gonna most associate with them to get their message through and make you um, remember them and think of them. And again, they're just letting you know they're around. They're just letting you know, hey, I'm here. Number three out of six, plus our bonus, <laughs> number three is um, more about sound. So you'll be doing something that has nothing to do with your animal. Say you're watching TV, say you're vacuuming, say you're sitting in the backyard, whatever, whatever thing you're doing, and it you literally feel like you just heard your cat's meow behind you or your dog's bark or you heard the sound of, that your horse made on the hay. And it really couldn't be there, right? My dog's not barking behind me. My dog is crossed over. There's no hay in my backyard. And yet you heard it. You have to trust it. This is another little hello from your beloved pet on the other side. They're just wanting you to think of them. So when this happens, think of them and feel the love. Think of them and feel the, oh, yay, cool. I love you. Just, just do that. That's all they're asking you to do. Okay. Number four of six, plus our bonus, is that, um, let's say you're, again, hanging out in your backyard, you are, you have nothing to do with your deceased animal right now. Maybe you're playing ping pong. I don't know what you're doing in your backyard, but for no reason whatsoever, you find yourself thinking of the animal that you love that's crossed over. I know this one's hard to believe because you think you're just thinking, but a lot of the time the animal kind of pushes our thoughts right there so that we remember them and think of them. And notice that you're not, when it happens, you're not thinking, 
angrily about your animal, you're thinking lovingly, you're thinking, oh, I miss her, I miss him, but it just came from nowhere. Um, so, for example, maybe I'm playing ping pong out in the backyard, but I don't associate my dog Bella with ping pong, and yet Bella popped into my head. Those pop into your head moments, they really count. Sign number five of six, plus we've got that bonus coming. Sign number five is when you feel like you see your pet that's crossed over out of the corner of your eye, right? And you turn your head and you look, nothing. There's no dog there, there's no horse there, there's, <laughs> there's no mouse running across. But right out of the corner of your eye, it really felt like um, your animal was there. So the animals do this also when they're alive. They basically send you their energy so you feel like they're there or you, or you keep feeling like you're seeing them there. They do it more often from the other side. So like right now, I don't have my dog. My dog is alive with me because I'm in a hotel. And so one of the things that my dog does is she'll show me, I'll, there's a picture and for whatever reason, I'll feel like I see her in the picture. And then I look closely, I'm like, oh no, she's not there. That's a that's that's not even a dog, what, what I'm seeing. But that's my dog saying hello. Same thing with animals that have crossed over. They do it way more often. But um, you're walking down the, the hallway and you're like, wait, what? You know, you, just, you think you saw them. They weren't there physically, but they were. And this is one you have to uh, really work on trusting. It's not your eyes playing tricks on you. It's your animal tapping into you so that your animal can give you this feeling of um, closeness and, hey, we're still together. And here's the kind of cool thing about that. Our animals are hanging out with us. So maybe with my physical eye, I didn't see her. But my third eye is seeing her because she is around. She is saying hello. She is checking in on me. So it's kind of a fun one to trust. But a lot of people, if they don't know that that's a way that a sign works, they don't trust it. Sign number six, and then we're going to talk about that bonus way. Sign number six for how animals communicate and send messages from the other side is through dreams. And this is where you can actually have some control. All the others were kind of like, hey, cool, are you giving me a sign? But for this one, it's different. For dreams, there's a whole little process, and I do have a whole video on this, a big long one that gives more in-depth information, but for now, what I'm gonna say is when you go to bed, think of your animal. So I would think of Bella, Bella, hello. <laughs> and I would say, Bella, will you please come visit me tonight? Now, it might take a few nights for this to happen. Don't be discouraged if it doesn't happen the first night, especially if, you, especially if you're deeply in grief. But um, ask your animal to visit you. And what will happen eventually, probably after a few nights, is that you'll have this crazy, wonderful, surreal dream with your animal that where you wake up and you're like, I feel like we were just hanging out together. I feel like we were, you know, it's just very, um, it feels so good and yet it feels almost unreal. It's so real. So that's how you ask for a visitation. Totally doable for everybody who has an animal on the other side. But it, your success with it will depend on how um, thoroughly enmeshed in the grief you are. Okay, here's the bonus way that animals are sending us messages from the other side. Did you know that your animal, when they cross over, they get busy and they start arranging the next animal to come into your life. So when the new animal comes into your life, whenever that is, whether it's right away or five years down the road, the animal that's left your life has had a hand and a lot of time just directly influenced it so that the new animal coming into your life is actually from the animal that has crossed over. So that new animal is a message and herself. I think you might want to check out who greets my pet on the other side so you can know what happened.